Good morning, everyone. I didn't get walk-on music. It's the deal, folks. So, it's great to see you all here. This is huge. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I didn't wanna come to this event. I'm gonna admit this now, get it over with. I spent last weekend, I kid you not, figuring out ways I could get exposed to the measles. It took me most of this week to figure out why I didn't want to come to this event. It wasn't the usual, oh, I'm going to give a talk. Eh, I had a talk ready. That's also unusual. Um, but it wasn't that. And it took me until yesterday morning to actually figure it out. I helped Kit and Craig launch, or actually more specifically, schedule the launch party. Let's be clear. Kubernetes at OzCon in 2015. That was 150 people, give or take, in a room talking about cloud native as an idea, cloud native as a possibility, the foundation that was going to come. It took another six months to get that started. And I'm, I like those smaller events. My second week at Google, Kelsey and my second week at Google, was the first KubeCon. He gave a great shout out to Joseph Jacks and Patrick Riley for starting this and making it very, very much a community grassroots effort to build KubeCon. And I wasn't sure that was still here. This is 2017. This was this room, this keynote stage on Monday. Uh, sorry, keynote day. Tuesday? Tuesday. It's been a long week. I knew over the weekend that this is what I was going to be stepping into. And I didn't know if it was still my community. I didn't know if it was still the group of people and the culture that I loved. So I said I had actually prepared a talk. So I'll do that really quick. We'll do that one first. So you get two talks. I'll do the talk first. I talk about Kubernetes as this bus that we get to help drive while we're building wings, but somebody strapped a rocket to the back. So this project over the last two years has gone uh, madly. It's been, it's been great fun. It's grown hugely. The number of contributors, the number of people engaged with it, the number of users, it's been amazing. And yet I woke up knowing I couldn't give just this talk. Woke up yesterday. But I'll give this one to start. All seven of the four founders of Kubernetes had an industry-changing vision. Math, anyone? Come on. You laugh at Kelsey. All right. We were going to change the conversations about cloud computing. We're going to do cross-industry collaboration. But this growth, this growth caused problems in the contributor community. Nobody really understood as we were moving from a Google-led uh, Google project to a community-led project how the power worked, who to ask for what. We were trying to build a distributed power system, distributed compute, distributed uh, involvement, distributed engagement, distributed decision-making system all for this community. And it wasn't really going all that well. People didn't know who to ask, so there was a shad shadowy power structure. Anyway. We got through all of that. Governance. Governance was important. So we elected a steering committee in October. Hooray, steering committee. That was very important. And we have this list of backlogs. And among the things that we have in this list of backlog, or this list of uh, backlog items, includes culture and value and making the contributor experience better and making sure that we actually distribute this power across the special interest groups and make sure they feel empowered and engaged. We have things like all of the extension points for Kubernetes that we've been talking about over the last couple of days, making sure there's a broad um, accessibility for an ecosystem, inclusivity, you name it, it's probably in this backlog. I also have graphs, lots of graphs. Many of them went up and to the right. It was great. There was lots of room for improvement. We were showing some improvement. That was the talk that I was going to give. 
But as I said, I woke up yesterday knowing I needed to rewrite this talk. Because as it turns out, Peter Drucker is awesome. And he said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Where we are today, and all of the different metrics and things that we are looking at uh, and have been looking at and all the ex different pieces of technology that we've been talking about are really important. But what we want to be as a community is possibly more important. How do we want to engage with each other? How do we want to engage with our technology? How do we want to engage with our vendors and our users and our peers? What do we want this community to be next year? If we've gone from 400 people at an event like this two years ago to 4,000, what does a year from now look like? What do we want it to look like? Do we want it to continue to multiply by 10? That doesn't seem to be reasonable. If we do, we have to be incredibly intentional about what we do with our culture and how we engage. So I think all of this was feeding into my fear of coming to this, uh, coming to this event. So the steering committee has looked at a bunch of the different values that we see bubbling up in the community. And as the bootstrap committee started trying to build this steering committee many months ago, we kept getting sucked into how do we make decisions. And we started talking about the different cultural values that we see in the community. And one of them is distribution is better than centralization. We want to see delegation of authority. We want to see delegation of decision making. Code ownership should be near and dear to the people who are writing it and making the best decisions. Documentation decisions should be made by the documenters. And lots and lots of frequent asynchronous communication between and among these groups. Does this sound like microservices or distributed compute to anyone? Anyway, it seems to fit the model we've got here. And the interesting thing in this comparison is that we're talking about people. These nodes in this distributed system are people. These nodes are groups of people. And these groups of people have to engage in high trust and strong social contract sort of ways. And that means meeting people, talking to people, bringing your best and most authentic self and engaging both technically and as a whole person. Andy Randall said this about, I, I, I found Twitter was actually what gave me the reason to rewrite this talk. I was reading Twitter over this week, and so you'll see lots and lots of tweets from the community, and a couple from outside, but from the community that made me say, we actually are living these values that the steering committee had had actually seen. Inclusive versus exclusive. Inclusive is better than exclusive. We want people to feel invited, engaged, and happy in this community. We want them to feel comfortable. And one of the th ways we saw this, I saw this on Twitter and I saw this reflected, was someone shared a note with Kim Bannerman saying that sh he was very surprised by how inclusive this was and how many women brought a very different cultural value to this particular event. Michelle Morali gave us that great opening keynote that gave us a survey of all of the, the different projects in the Cloud Native Compute Foundation on Tuesday. And as another example, that opened up the possibility for people who were not familiar with everything that was already existing in the Cloud Native Compute Foundation and all the different projects and all the different acronym, acronyms gave a starting point for them, gave them an opportunity to know where to ask questions and not immediately from day one feel barraged by a bunch of information that they thought they should know. How many people here 
have felt imposter syndrome at a tech event. All right. I think the rest of you are lying. Okay. Anyway. It is really important to make accessible the technology that we build and make accessible the events that we have to share this information. If we in any way want to get people involved in our community, if we want to have that 2027 view of the future developers that Alexis Richardson talked about. Another example in the community that we, I saw this week was one on the vendor side, the, the sponsor side. The diversity committee had 130 applicants for scholarships. And the numbers that were given on, the, on Tuesday morning were that there were going to be just a few, way more than previous years, but just a few diversity scholarships. And the diversity committee had reached out to several of us, including myself, saying, is there any more money? I know it's end of year, budgets, anybody got surplus? Can we really do it? So there are 130 people here who would not have been able to attend had this group of companies not said bringing new people, people who are underrepresented to KubeCon and CloudNativeCon is important. If we just tell people things, if we just broadcast all the time, you don't learn nearly as well. Bringing people together, involving them and engaging them is the best way to keep them close in a circle. Building a community and a culture of respect, active collaboration and mentorship is a core piece of Kubernetes. I touched on this already, company over community, or sorry, community, whoa, community is greater than company. I will say that again, community is greater than company. And this is a huge thing within Kubernetes. We've seen lots of really amazing contributors and users and community members move from company to company and continue working just as they were a week before flying a new corporate flag. And that has been not only acceptable, encouraged and exciting for people. New opportunities and new growth of individuals is going to be what makes a lasting community and culture. Russ Cox isn't part of our community except by sort of a grandfatherly extension of Go. But just as it makes no sense to be proud of being bad at math, it makes no sense to be proud of being bad at empathy and humility. We collectively as a group are more than what we do, and the only way for, what, for us to be empathetic is to understand how we all bring unique perspectives to this community. Kenneth Masada, a core contributor, um, is super excited about how to make this better, make Kubernetes better, users and ecosystem, vendors, people. We have the broader than just what we do technologically. There is now a SIG bouldering, apparently. Not entirely sure they've gone through the SIG process, so we're gonna have to work on whether or not that's been, anyway go through the SIG development process, make a proposal and all that, but there's a SIG bouldering. But we have to com pull together as a community, as whole people. KubeCon Yoga has community members teaching yoga and engaging with yoga, and then Chris Novo was playing her guitar on Thursday morning. There was another one this morning. I don't know anything about that one, sadly, but I'm sure it was fantastic yoga. It was, it was fantastic yoga, good. We have an audience member that can confirm. We also have this culture of continuous learning. Um, I'm gonna reference the, the comic here. This comic is a comic that is put together um, by Google 
and there is research happening behind it about comics and visual delivery of visual information as a learning experience that is happening. And Kubernetes as a community, because we are so open, was one of the spots that they wanted to do this research. And this continual learning leads to a value of improvement always over any sort of stagnation. Always making sure that we're growing, always making sure that we're listening and hearing and being empathetic to someone else's perspective in order to bring our better Kubernetes, bring us a better platform, bring us a better project. Get out of your comfort zone. Learn, engage with people, understand their perspective. More continual learning. Fewer hackathons, more apprenticeships. This all leads to that core value of continual, continual improvement and continual engagement, which leads to further our, the announcement that we are starting a Kubernetes mentoring program. Now this has the idea of mentoring people from contributors to reviewers, reviewers to code owners, or reviewers to approvers, approvers to code owners over time, and we are piloting a program. There's more information at that URL. And that is actually being led by Paris Pittman, uh, George Castro, and Chris Love are all working in that. We also have a core value of retrospectives. Again, going right back to that continual improvement, always making sure that we look back at what we've done and find ways to make our culture and our community and our software and our project better. We also have a value of automation over process. Open source projects have lots and lots of low glamour hard work. Not all of that can actually happen in automation. And what can happen in automation, at least within Kubernetes, is being worked on in SIG contributor experience and SIG testing. But where it can't be, where this, this hard work that has to be continual, the chopping wood, the carrying water, where it can't actually be automated away, we need to make sure, as a culture, that we reward it. We reward the work that is high value, low glamour. We, we reward the people who do the hard work that actually makes these projects operationally possible. So what do we want the next year, the next five years to look like? This is our project to build. This is our project as contributors, as users, as a broader ecosystem around it. What do we want it to be? What does success look like? We need to define that and we need to think it through. We know we want it to be a cross-industry collaboration. We know that we want to learn from the people who have gone before us, learn from the mistakes that we make, learn from the different perspectives that people who don't think like us or don't look like us bring. And we know that we've just started. We know that we have started this project with just a nucleus of an idea that we think can change our industry. So how do we actually all continue to work together, grow this project, grow adoption of this project, grow stability of this project, and make it the new paradigm that we believe it can be. Help shape Kubernetes. Help shape our industry. And just meet lots of people that are great. Thanks.